you know, a while ago, Undoomed made a video about a redneck feminist. Well, I'm not sure if I've one-upped him here or not, but I found a ditzy feminist, believe it or not. So, without further ado, let's get to it. Hi, my loves. So, today's video is going to be a teeny bit different than normal. Actually, a lot different, but don't be scared. Don't be scared. Don't be scared. It's okay. It's okay. Just listen and believe. Today, I'm going to be talking about a topic that is extremely important to me, and that is feminism. And a lot of you are probably like, X, 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 and you're like, Xing out on this video and everything. But it's a controversial topic, and that's why I'm talking about it, because it shouldn't be that way. It's such a positive thing in my mind, and I just want you guys to feel the same. Despite the fact that feminism is a horrible ideology, I am glad that you share your thoughts on it. Now, let me show you why feminism is such a horrible ideology. Still not convinced? Let's see how feminists behave when the Canadian Association for Equality holds talks on issues that affect men and are not looking to put women down or even bring feminism into the discussion. I went to the opening uh, of the men's uh, the Center for Men and Families in Toronto. So Cafe Toronto has put together a office space and a place where men and their families can go for support, for understanding, to talk about their things, to uh, they offer various kinds of workshops and support services. So this is, this is a new thing in Canada. We've got lots and lots of services which are focused on women. Or how about this violent protest put on by feminists who did not want to have a men's rights activist hold a talk on why men kill themselves so much. Uh, the local has endorsed this rally and has uh, endorsed certainly and, and will join the UMT coalition against sexism. In terms of the unpaid work, I mean, we're not even talking about the, uh, the uh, unpaid work that uh, women, women do society, child care. We're not super interested in talking to you, first of all, but basically we're here to shut down an event that is promoting the patriarchy. Good 
very frustrated. I was studying all today and I took time out of my studies to come here. Would you like to ask him why he's here? I, I don't, I'm not, I'm not sufficiently convinced that I'll receive an answer that isn't what I presented. Two of my friends committed suicide and I want the peace of understanding why that happened. Wow. When, when did this happen? It happened about two years ago. It was one after the other like that. Did you expect to get some addressing of suicide issue at the talk here? Yes, I did. What I have to ask on that, and I'll ask you, is why this space to talk about that? There, like Feminism, for example, offers lots of spaces to talk about mental health issues, talk about depression, both in men, women, and people who don't identify within the binary. I think everybody's voice should be uh, heard. I wondered why the security was uh, trying to keep me back, and I think it's for my own safety. So, so you believe it's hate speech, right? It is hate speech. I've never heard of him before. I don't even know what he's talking about. Okay, I've never heard of him before. We, we invite you to educate I just yourself. Yeah, so I just wanted to listen to him. I just wanted to see who this guy is and what he's talking about. But now I can't get in. You should be fucking shamed of yourself. You're fucking scum. You are fucking scum. Fucking rape apologist, incest supporting, woman hating, fucking scum. Is there someone else that can wait? Fucking scum. Yeah, just well, another. I just, I just want to listen to someone else's opinion. I'm not even on a side here. I just listen to as many people as I can. You know what, though? Why would you pay money to fucking support a fucking rape apologist if you weren't fucking one? Well, it's fucking scum. Yeah, you should be fucking proud of yourself. These are the fucking men that are going to rape you. Sisters and women in your life to be fucking ashamed. And this is only a small example of the proliferation of lunacy that feminists love to indulge in. So basically in this video, I'm going to be talking about what feminism is, what it is not, why I'm a feminist, and please bear with me if you don't, if you don't want to hear this, but you still are not very educated on this topic, I really would love it if you'd listen to me and like hear me out. It is seldom that a feminist is willing to listen to an opposing point of view. So why should anyone be willing to hear you out? But to prove that I am willing to listen and engage in a conversation with you, I will listen to what you have to say. And even after you listen to me and you still don't want to be a feminist or you still don't like this topic, still makes you uncomfortable or anything like that, I totally respect your opinion, but at least listen to what I have to say first. Okay, this seems like a feminist that I could actually get along with because she's not a militant psychotic bitch. So I knew I was a feminist um, a bit o a year or two ago when my friend Jessie, she's my roommate, and her sister Jackie, when they told me about it, I of course had my doubts because I didn't completely understand what the topic was and how it related to me. Just come up and watch our orientation film. You're free to leave at any time. Whoa, a free movie, thanks. Out of my way, jerk ass. But after listening, it completely changed my mindset and affected me for the better. This is the kind of stuff that you usually hear from someone who has just joined a cult. And this was before, um, oh, this was a big movement before Beyonce talked about it, before Joseph Gordon-Levitt, um, Emma Watson talked about it. And let me tell you, I am delighted that that happened and I speak for feminists around the world when I say it's such a euphoric feeling that it's become such a big thing and that so many people are getting educated on the topic and coming to realization that it's best. The thing about celebrities is that they're just people like you and me. Saying that Beyonce, jo Joseph Gordon Levitt, and Emma Watson have talked about it does not mean that these people have looked at the feminist ideology with a critical eye, and does not mean that they have considered dissenting points of view. 
How can you ever know that your arguments will withstand criticism? I'm going to begin by telling you the definition of feminism as well as what feminism is not and common misconceptions about it. What feminism is by definition is equality, which means men and women have the exact same rights as one another. No one, no sex is higher than the other. A man is not better. A woman is not better. We are equal. Well, I saw this coming from a mile away. I love how feminists constantly hide behind the dictionary definition of feminism and say all their activism is in the name of equality. It's about equality. It's about equality. It's about equality. It's about equality. That's all us feminists want. We just want equality. It's about equality. That's it. Nothing more. Nothing less. It's just equality. But the fact is, feminists are constantly spewing bullshit statistics pulling fire alarms on talks about male suicide, selling misandry merchandise on Etsy, and guilt-tripping women into going into STEM while they get a bachelor's degree, master's degree, and a PhD in women's studies. With that being said, being a feminist isn't a bad thing. It's not a bad word. It shouldn't make people run in the other direction like they probably did when they saw the title of this video. Maybe you should consider why that is exactly why people tend to run like bats out of hell when they hear the word feminist. In fact, when I hear that a man is a feminist, I get excited. It's such, it's such an almost turn on to me because... Whatever floats your boat. It means that he values me. He values me as a woman. I'm not an object to him. What? What did you just say? It means that he values me. He values me as a woman. I'm not an object to him. So why are you saying that only male feminists are capable of valuing you and not seeing you as an object? Oh boy, the feminist priestess who brainwashed you really got you good. And it means that we can start a future together in a sense that he believes we are equals. He doesn't have to be the breadwinner. I can be a woman who works while he can stay home with the kids. We have these equal roles and one role isn't fit for one another. It doesn't mean that I'm not going to cook and clean for you. Of course I'd love to do that for you, but it also means that he'd love to cook and clean for me because as a woman I don't have to do that. There are more and more stay-at-home dads these days and I think the primary cause behind that is necessity rather than feminism. If me and my girlfriend today had a kid, I would be a stay-at-home dad because she makes almost three times as much as I make. And no, I'm not bothered by the fact that she makes more money than I do. It means that these normal gender roles completely cease to exist. They completely dissipate from our everyday lives of what we have in our minds as what modern society is. You mean those gender roles which are observable from birth? and even in other animals? I found that when I'm in a position of power, men don't like it. Oh, care to share an example? I've been called a B-I-T-C-H for simply speaking up, stating my opinion, offering my intellectual solutions to problems in order to help resolve them and fix them. Now, all of a sudden, since I'm being assertive yet confident in that situation and I know what I'm talking about, and men feel a bit intimidated, all of a sudden, I am being called a B-I-T-C-H for stating and trying to help what's going on. Spoiler alert, some people are assholes. And I need feminism because I would like to be in that same exact situation and be looked at with respect. The same respect a man would get if he was in a position of power. And I want to be in a situation where men don't feel uncomfortable yet marginally intimidated by a woman with power. The type of respect that you're looking for in these specific situations is earned, not demanded. And how do you think that feminism is going to get you the respect that you demand? On the other hand, I need feminism because I don't want to be called a B-I-T-C-H for standing up for myself. I am a young college student and I don't want to be called a B-I-T-C-H by a man at a party just for rejecting offensive sexual advances. Newsflash, you can't control what other people think and say. But to me, if a man and a woman have the same sex life, they should be treated as such. A woman shouldn't be looked down upon because she sleeps with just as many people as a man does. It's so sad to the point that if I'm at a party or something and a guy comes up to me and he hits on me, the guy respects what I'm saying more if I tell him I have a boyfriend than if I would just say no because it's almost like he respects bro code or a fellow man more than he respects my decision to not do something.
Nowadays, guys are making up very silly excuses such as friend zone and nice guys finish last because they feel sorry for themselves because they treated a girl with the utmost respect as a human should be treated. They treated her nicely and they think they deserve a reward, aka sex, for doing so. No. Yeah, girls never lead guys on at all. No, that never happens. I need feminism conjointly because my personal decision to remain abstinent shouldn't result in me being called a prude. I call complete bullshit on this. Those who try to abstain from sex are usually the biggest whores, male or female. But it is your choice to remain celibate if you wish to. Furthermore, if I chose to sleep with many men, which I personally abstain from doing, it shouldn't result in me being called these derogatory names such as a slut or a whore because Men need to understand that equally, women are just as sexual beings as men. Women may not proclaim it as much as men because throughout ubiquitous, as well as ecumenical history, we were taught that it's unladylike and wrong. I'm gonna let Teal Deer explain this one for you. Okay, there's a biological imperative for why this double standard exists, and I'm going to explain it as quickly as I can. For men, in nearly all societies throughout time, men have been the ones to approach and initiate contact in regards to pretty much anything when it comes to reproduction, either in humans or in other animals. It is their biological role to seek out females and win favor with them by basically being the biggest, strongest, most badass individuals that they can be, thus proving that their genetics are actually viable to be passed on. A man who is able to sleep with a lot of women is essentially, therefore, the pinnacle of what a man is supposed to do. Other men will recognize this and applaud it, even if they are slightly jealous of it. Women, however, operate on a qualifying paradigm. Because for a woman to reproduce, it's, essen it's incredibly time-consuming and actually, essentially, possibly fatal for her to do so, if a woman sleeps with a lot of men, it proves that she has incredibly low standards because she is incapable of actually judging who is a quality mate. So, a man who is actually aware of a woman's, shall we say inability to actually make any decent rational decisions as to who they should be mating with, they become very, very untrustworthy because it shows that they are actually incapable of making rational, logical decisions about their life. I need feminism because I don't want to be apologetic for having a superior job position than a man. It coincides with the fact that it is proven that a college-educated man makes $20,000 more per year than a woman with the same college education level. That's so unjustifiably discriminatory. Society doesn't even hide the fact that it's this sexist. The wage gap is simply the average earnings of men and women working full time. It does not count for different job positions, hours worked, or different jobs. It has nothing to do with the same job. It has nothing to do with discrimination. Like, even in the media, for example, when Miley, before Miley did all the stuff she did, I still love her, but when she f at first came out, with um, a <laughs> when she first came out with a provocative picture, it was of her sitting on a stool with a sheet wrapped around her, and everyone was livid. They were saying, "Oh my gosh, she's a Disney Channel star! How can she do this? How can she pose in that way?" Yeah, I remember when that happened. I was at work, and a coworker of mine had a funny look on his face. I asked him what was up, and he said, "I saw a link about Miley Cyrus's controversial new photo shoot." So I went to see what the controversy was about. I wish I hadn't, because my daughter is her age. But seriously, this ties back to what Teal Deer said about the slut double standard. But recently, Nick Jonas came out, not even in a artful way, but blatantly grabbing his man parts, and everyone's like, oh my god, he's so hot, he grew up so nicely, like, and he's a Disney star, just like Miley. Why was Miley's provocative picture a big deal when his was nothing and it was praise. Yet the feminist propaganda machine known as BuzzFeed released this article drooling over that photo shoot. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm saying all this stuff about how men can treat women better with more respect, but there it can go both ways. For example, when women tell men to be a man or men tell that to each other, that's wrong to me because what is what does be a man mean? Oh jeez. It's slang for rising to the occasion to complete a task or to take care of one's responsibility. That's what man up means. Men can show just as much emotion as women. It's not it shouldn't be frowned upon when a man sheds a tear. It shouldn't be that 
rare. Crying is not an emotion that men are eager to display. That does not inherently invalidate coping mechanisms that men use. And men can have just as many problems as women. For example, men can be sexually assaulted. I heard one time that a man was on the phone with, you know, a sexual assault line and a woman laughed at him because men can't be sexually assaulted, but they can. Men can be raped, women can be raped, and both genders do it. Well, I agree with you on this one. Men can rape women, women can rape men, men can rape men, and women can rape women. But there are a lot of feminists out there who do not believe that men can be raped. And just as much a man can be anorexic, why is it called manorexic when a man's anorexic? It's anorexic, it's a, it's a disease, it doesn't matter what your sex is or your gender, whatever. The fact that even something as simple as a disease or a problem can be sexist, it just, it blows my mind. And I agree with you on that one too. It kind of sounds like you're more of an egalitarian to me. Although a man can be raped or sexually assaulted, I can't deny the fact that, you know, men rape women more than women rape men. I will agree with you on that, but actually, men are raped more than women overall when you include prison rapes. And with that being said, nowadays, I want society be, to be able, instead of teaching their daughters to carry mace everywhere with them and take self-defense classes, they should be teaching their sons that no means no. Oh god, not this again. This argument is predicated on the assumption that if we tell people not to commit crimes of any type, they will not commit them. Don't lock your cars or your house. We're teaching people not to steal. Don't do anything to save yourself if someone is trying to kill you. We're teaching them that killing is wrong. Then you say women shouldn't try to defend themselves because we need to teach men that raping is wrong. Where the fuck do you live? Do you live in Somalia where there's no functional government and there is nothing but sheer anarchy and even if a man did rape a woman, there is nothing that the government can do because it has effectively no power. Do you hear the bullshit that is coming out of your mouth right now? I think I first internally became a feminist in grade school or in high school when the American education system made it completely apparent that they value a boy's education more than a girl's. Oh fuck, I think I know what she's going to say next. She's going to play the fucking dress code card. That makes me want to scream and pull my hair out. This became apparent to me on a few separate occasions. Number one was a time when I wore a very thick tank top. Another time when I wore a skirt that was like three inches above my knees when it was supposed to be two, which isn't even flattering in the beginning. And I was sent home for these reasons. And I remember, and I quote, the sole reason was because it was suggestive to the boys. Let that sink in. So what my school was telling me was that they would rather send me home, take away any academic lesson I would have learned that day because of the small fact that an inch of my knee might give a hormonal high school boy a thing. What are you, 12? But I do partially agree with you. The reason given as to the boys being distracted really isn't a good reason, in my opinion. A better reason would be that it violates the school's dress code that I have no doubt was clearly laid out in the student handbook that you were given. So, with all that being said, I think you can understand why I love feminism and it makes me happy, it makes me feel good that I am a valued member of society, just valued exactly as much as a man is valued and a man is valued exactly as much as I am valued. I hope by watching this video, everyone fully understands what it means to be a feminist. It's not a bad thing. It's an awesome thing. And you can join me and we're like a little movement. So I really hope you don't mind this video at all. I just really wanted to talk about it because it's a very important part of my life. And I wanted to tell people about it because it makes me excited. And hopefully I even created some little feminists out of you guys. Boy or girl, it doesn't matter. Boy feminists are awesome too though because they make me, they're just so cute. Well, they're both cute. Anyway. What up?